walk the talk, the quest for authenticity, part two this morning. John chapter 1 verse 6. If we say we have fellowship, if we say, if we say, I have a relationship with God. If we say, I have received Jesus as my Savior. If we say, Jesus is my Lord. If we say, I have received Jesus into my heart. If we say, I am a Christian. If we say, there's a big if over there. But if you say it, he says, what's the next thing? We have, okay, I'm sure you can all read that. If we say we have fellowship with him while we in the okay catch that catch that catch that catch that some people want to walk in the light on first sunday other sundays darkness it's okay listen 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 if we say i have a relationship with god and i Walk in darkness. Next two words. Tap somebody next to you and say, we lie. We lie. Oh, we lie. I don't like that. I don't like anyone calling me a liar. Don't call me a liar. Maybe I misfired this time, but don't call me a liar. And John's looking at the earliest church. That was so close to the time of Jesus. And John himself is teaching them. And John's looking at them. And John says, hey, listen. Being saved and being a child of God. And walking in darkness. Stop the lie. And I look like, look at John and I'm saying, stop getting in my face. I've been pastoring the church for so many years. And I'm this and that. And John looks at Pastor Gavin and says, read the word. If you have fellowship, say you have fellowship with God and you also have fellowship with darkness, you are a liar. John, be a little merciful. Just say, he's slightly off the mark. If you have fellowship with darkness, he's a, he's a struggling Christian and he's going to come back. No, you're a liar. Come on, John. And you're, you're a liar and you do not practice the truth. Well, at fast AG, I promised you I will not make it sweet. Because the word of God is a double-edged sword. It pierces through the outer to the marrow inside the bone. And if I don't let God do heart surgery with me every day, I'm wasting an amazing grace and a powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit. John looks and says, lie number one. What's lie number one? If you say, if you claim to have a relationship with God and walk In darkness at the same time. That is lie number one that we're dealing with this morning. That's lie number one. You can say anything in the church. You can do anything in the church. If you Instagram and your Facebook and your friends around you in college and in other places are people of darkness, John says, stop the lie. Stop the lie. Well, let's go on. Matthew 6, 22. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will become full of darkness. If then the light, if then the light, if then that light, he says so strongly over there, he says, if the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? You have come to a point where you don't, 
I mean, John's given us warnings, but we're looking over here and Jesus is looking and saying, hey, be careful when you play the game between light and darkness, you'll find yourself in a place where you have received, I, they say, is the heart, is the direct channel to your heart and to your spirit, right? And he says, you know, it's light that goes through the eyes. It's the light that goes through the eyes. You get used to looking at darkness so much, And focusing on darkness so much, the darkness then becomes the light that is entering inside your spirit. And and he says, how wretched and horrible when you stand and all you're looking at is actually darkness. And you're calling the light, you're calling the darkness as light. John is watching his people. You look at the Corinthian church, you look at the Philippian church, you look at the Ephesian church. What was their problem? Their problem was when you mix the things, the wrong things in your life, there will come a time when you're looking and you have to say, how I, 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 I have come to a position where how great is that darkness over my soul. I'll come to that. I'll come to more of that. But this morning, John 1 John 1 verse 5. This is the message that we have heard and proclaimed to you. That God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. Can you say that point number one with me this morning? God is light. Hallelujah. Can you say it this morning? God is light. I want you to say this morning, I don't care what you're going through. The darkness might come with pain. The darkness may come with failure. The darkness may come with wrong things. The darkness may come with sicknesses. The darkness may come with misunderstandings. The darkness may be setting. You may have sat in darkness for a long time. But can you look at your darkness today and say today, God is light. Hallelujah this morning. Listening to a message is not listening here, it's listening here. And when you receive the word, you confess it. And that's why we say, can you repeat after me? Hallelujah. We begin to start a confession right here. And and the word of God begins to lead us forward. He says, God is light. Look at that scripture. In Him, there is no darkness. There is no darkness in God. Hallelujah. There are people that begin to attribute evil things to God. There are people that would take darkness and say, Oh, you know, the Bible says there's no male, there's no female. Just an example of it. And therefore they would put trance into it. Hey, there's no darkness with God. Don't play with darkness and God because your light will become darkness. And that's what's happening in the world around. You're looking and saying, How can these people believe it? They believe it because darkness has become their light. Darkness has become their light. You and I need to be people of the word. In God. In God there is no darkness. When you bring darkness into that place. In an attitude. Darkness is not just. It's, you know, we are, I'm sure when I'm saying light. You're immediately thinking about light and darkness. In those physical terms. Light and darkness is a spiritual reality of the soul. Write it down somewhere. Light and darkness for you is not how many bulbs you have in your house and what we have around us. When the Bible talks about light and darkness, it's the spiritual reality of your soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah somewhere. Difficult, right? Yeah, let's go with the difficult this morning. Let's go with the difficult this morning. Can you say hallelujah when it's difficult? Yeah, let's go with the difficult because God wants to touch you. We can't escape this and suddenly turn away the passage and says, Oh, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's history. This passage is for now. 
You cannot say you love that God who died for sinners and walk in darkness. You and I lie. Let's go on. He says, Listen, remember, God is light. God is light in His being. Again, in John chapter 1, in the gospel that he wrote earlier, it says, He, John the Baptist, was not the light. He, some of the people began to say, John the Baptist is the light. And he says, He came to a bit, bear witness about the light. The true light which enlightens everyone coming into the world. Who is John the Baptist? The one that is bearing witness that Jesus is the Hallelujah. Can you say with me true light? Jesus is the true light. And so you're looking at Jesus and you say, He is the light. God is the light. Jesus is the true light. There is everything else around is not the true light. Not John the Baptist. And Jesus says there's nobody greater than John the Baptist. Born to the, to the mothers that have so far birthed kids. And John says, I want you to understand, there's only one true light in the world. It's not some pastor, it's not some bishop, it's not some other leader, it's not anybody else. When you go home today, as you sit before God today, there's only one that is the true light. Hallelujah. His name is Yeshua. His name is Yeshua. His name is Yeshua. When you sit in the darkness of your soul and you're looking and saying, there's sadness, I'm depressed, I'm discouraged, I'm disappointed, I'm in a pit, I don't know how to come out. The God of the Bible says, I am the only true light in your season of darkness this morning. I am the only true light for you. I'm the only true light for your children. I'm the only true light for your youth. I'm the only true light in the college. I'm the only true light in the, in the office. I'm the only true light in the neighborhood. I'm the only true light in your marriage. I am the only true light in your family. Whatever you're looking at this morning, if there's darkness upon it, know that God makes a declaration. I am the light. Not only I am the light, but I am the true light come on give him a hallelujah this morning as he says in John 9 verse 5 as long as I am in the world I am the light of the world hallelujah I am the true light I am the light of the world so just in case you thought that he's a Sunday morning light he's a devotion light when you pray light he says get out that door and I want you to understand, I am the light of that world. Oh God, it's so ugly out there. It's looking so bad out there. When you get to the bad place, you as a Christian must know that God is the light of that world. That's when we begin to witness this morning. Look at that. Look at that as he goes on. He says, I have come into the world as light. John 12 verse 46. And in John 1 verse 4, In him was life and life was the light of men. Hallelujah. You see life and light coming together. We've gone used to understanding light that you press the button, it comes on. But God's look at you and say, hey, light and life go together. When it's from God, the sunlight comes. It strikes the plants. It strikes everything else. And it's everything, photosynthesis and all that kind of stuff happens. And life begins to grow and life begins to birth life. And he says, I want you to understand the connection. At the core of this light is life. There's a life giving spirit. Hallelujah. There's a life giving spirit in it. Let me go. Let me go on. Let me go on this morning. And he wants us to understand he is the life of the light of men. God is not ju just, he is not like the light. He is the light. Don't look at something and say God is like the light. God is light itself. There's a day coming when the Bible says He's going to come back and bring the kingdom in. And He says there's going to be no sun anymore. The sun, the moon and stars and everything all retired. Because you're looking into that text and you realize over there that that God of the Bible, it says He will be the light. He will be the light. He will radiate 
His church will radiate. And that's what we need to start getting as a worship team. If we say we go to the presence of God, there must be a light that's radiating out of us. Light does not define God. Many times we say, oh, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So what we do is we go and say, okay, light is like this, light is like this, light is like this, light is like this. So Jesus is like this, like this, like this, like this. Hey, no, light is defined by who Jesus is. There are metaphors over there. There are pictures over there. But beloved ones, somewhere you got to go beyond the picture. Hallelujah. Because you need to define the word light from who God is. From who God is. If not, you look at some guys, oh, that guy's a nice guy. So God's holiness must be looking like that guy. You develop ideas of holiness. You de develop ideas of ethics. You develop ideas of morality. You develop all this stuff looking at human beings. And God looks at you and me and says, not even a fraction of what you're looking in someone else. When you come to understand something, look at me. I am the light of this world. I am the light of this world. It's light is his personality. God lights up everything around us. We must be careful what we are using and calling light around us. Look at him. He says in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 6 to 9, he says over there, he says, walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good, right, true. Good, right, true. When light shines, what does light shining produce? Something that is good, something that is right, Something that is true. Can you hold those three together? Say, can you say it with me? When light shines, it, it's like it, it hits the prism. It breaks into three pieces. And he's saying with me, there are three parts to it. And those three parts are something good, something right, something true. And you're looking at those three parts. And these are what you need to take. When it's good, it has to do something with morality. When it's right, it has to do something with logic and being something, being good or bad in that sense of the word. When it's truth, it's something to do with what is spiritual. Well, you're looking at it and you're saying, wow, you know, uh, uh, the, it, uh, we, we make our decisions from it. Wow, look at that beautiful Mercedes Benz. It costs one crore, 20 lakhs. Is it a good car? Wow, it's a good car. It's a good car. Christians don't park on the good. Because when light shines, it's going to ask, is it the right car? You're using your head. And you're using your sense. Can I ride that in Bangalore? Yeah, it can go zero to 200 in five seconds. But it's the right thing. Yeah, it's right. I got the money to buy it now. I have the money. It's morally okay. It's logically okay. But you come to the truth part. And suddenly God's looking at you and me and saying, let's define it by the truth. You and four kids can get into a vehicle costing 1.25 crore and ride around. Or you can build 25 churches across the villages and all the nation of India. And people will worship my glory in that place. And you're looking and saying, truth. i got to face truth. What's the truth? One crow, 25 lakhs. Truth is in Jesus. And you're looking at Jesus and you're trying to take your decision. And it's not because it's good. 
It's not because you got the right kind of finances. You're looking at a truth question. It's spiritual. It's deep. The girl may be good. She might be the right person to be a wife. But it's only truth that will decide whether God wants her to be your wife or not. You see, that's light. Is light coming on as I'm talking about light? Is light coming on as we talk about light? Because God works. You take truth by itself, it's dangerous. If you, you can walk in truth and you can hit so, somebody so hard with the truth. I was passionate about truth till I hurt several with truth. Because God looked at me and said, not just truth, son. What is good that's truth with what is good. And there's a good way of handling truth. And there's a bad way of handling truth. And there's a right way of representing the truth. And a wrong way of representing the truth. Are you catching what I'm saying just now? Is it, is it easy? I'm not teaching any rocket science. I've given you three points just now. What's the first one? Where truth, is, where, where light is concerned. Light produces, pardon? God's light is, number one, good. Number two, okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God's way is good. God's way is right. God's light is truth. That's God. You're looking at Jesus. He's good, he's right, he's truth. Don't catch one of those three. Don't catch one of the three. You're going to go into error. Watch those three, blend them together, mix them up together. Well, let's go on, let's go on, let's go on, let's go on this morning. God has something for us this morning. You know, you, you need to be able to look at it and see that love, that light holds these three things together. And, and we must understand that evil, the secular, the anti-God is not a place for you and for me. It is, it is a place of darkness. Do not look at something and say, wow, they are secular. Secular means without God. Light does not exist without God because God is light. Secular spaces are not for Christians. People that belong to God do not celebrate secularism. They are willing to pay the price for their faith. Catch what we're going into. Catch what we're going into just now. In 2 Corinthians 11, 12 to 15, he, he's saying over there, and, and what I do, I will continue to do in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their, their boasted mission, they work on the same terms as we do. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, distinguish themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, Paul is saying, hey, I want you to, understand there's a man that's working in the world and he's calling himself also an apostle. He's also saying he's a servant of God. He's also saying, he says they are they are trying to separate themselves and get that identity and no wonder because Satan disguises himself as a oh hallelujah Satan disguises Himself as an angel of light. Now you know what's the problem with light? 
And he's got a team. Look at it. Not only Satan disguises himself, he says it's no surprise if Satan's servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. If you don't tow their line of their version about race, about sex, about extramarital affairs, their version of marriage, their version of what can happen, if you don't tow their version of it, they will hate you, they will cut you down, they will pull you out. Because they disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. They look more loving than everybody else. They look more caring. They look more righteous. Some of them are more righteous than Jesus, it looks like. Because what Jesus refused to do, they do. In the name of all kinds of things. Listen, if God is in the house, hallelujah, then the light has to be in the house. If, if, if God is in the family, then the light has to be in the family. Light has to be in your home. Light has to be in your office. It looks like, like it's, everything has come out of the blackout. Everything must change. Whatever does not look like God in the world is darkness. It is whether it's neon lights, whether it's LEDs, whether whatever it is, whatever you call it, my beloved ones, the light of this world is darkness. And if you constantly let it enter into you. The Bible says it will change and your light will actually be light of darkness this moment. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Number one, God is light in his being. Very quickly, number two. At the same time, it's a new commandment I'm writing to you, which is true in you, because the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. They're looking and saying, oh, so how do we do this? And John's looking at them and saying, come on, guys, get it together. Don't try to manufacture it. The true light is already shining. It's been shining 2,000 years. It's been shining before that. And it will only, the Bible say, says, it's going to shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And he's saying, looking at them and saying, a new commandment I give to you, I'm writing to you. The darkness is passing away and the true light, say already shining. Say already shining. I don't know where you're hurting I don't know where the pain is. I don't know where the darkness is. But the good news for you and for me this morning is that the true light is already shining. You and I need to go out and stand in the light. The more you withdraw in your pain, the more you withdraw in your disappointment, the more you withdraw and hide. Notice we hide from the light and we'll come out in the darkness when darkness becomes our best friend. We don't want to be seen. And so Nicodemus, he hears about it. He's, he's filled with fear. And he comes in the night time to ask Jesus, can you tell me a little more about this? But my beloved wants for us to be able to understand just now. We're looking at this passage of scripture and it says the darkness is passing away. The darkness is passing away in John chapter 1 in the gospel. It says over there, he says, In him was life. The life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say the light is overcoming darkness? Which means if you are sitting in a dark spot and you're saying, I've been here for so long, it only means one thing, you have not activated the light of His glorious presence. Rather, you have chosen and thought that God will only look at you just because of your tears and you're crying and crying and crying and God's looking at you and saying, my child, I, I'm not the God that's attracted to tears of darkness. Come and stand in the light where what is good, what is right, what is truth. And suddenly you're standing in that place and you're looking and saying, but this is not true. 
this is not good for me to do this. And I've been, you know, pastor, I've done this for the last five years. I, I made the mistake of doing this. What is good, what is right, what is truth needs to be a light that is overcoming the lies of the enemy. What is bad from the enemy. What is evil from the enemy. The pain, the hurt, the deception, the, the cheating, the lying. And you're looking and saying, God, the light overcomes the darkness. It can't be in fellowship with the light if darkness is running your situation right now. The two don't coexist. Come out. Come out. He's saying so beautifully over there in John chapter 1 verses 8 and 9. He says, it's the true light which enlightens everyone. It's always shining. The darkness cannot overcome it. Thirdly, it enlightens everyone because it's the light of the world. Hallelujah. Fourthly, it says, he says over there in John 12, 46, I have come as light into the world that whoever ever believes in me may not remain. Say, may not remain. Come on, talk to yourself this morning and say, uh, if you're in a tight spot, this morning say, I don't need to remain. 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 My child does not need to remain. My son does not need to remain. My marriage does not need to remain. My family does not need to be remain. My finances do not need to remain in the darkness. My everything else in your life this morning, know this morning that you don't need to remain in the darkness. Hallelujah. Because when the light shines, it removes, it chases. The Bible says darkness is passing away. Can you say darkness is passing away? That's the word over your life just now. Darkness is passing away. Step out of it. Don't stay with its pain and its hurt, its anger, its unforgiveness and all these things. He says, Who, whoever believes in me will not remain in darkness. And then he goes on, he says in Romans 13, 11 to 14, Besides this, you know the time, the hour is coming to wake from your sleep. Those who like sleep are in the darkness. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we once believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So let them cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Hallelujah. Cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Hallelujah. Put on the armor of what is good. Put on the armor of what is right. Put on the armor of what is truth. And the lies of the devil are going to get packing down. And the evil of the devil is going to come down. Because your light is in armor that God. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody raise a clap offering to the Lord this morning. God is moving. God is here. He says, verse 13, he says, Let us walk properly in the daytime. Not with the orgies and the party spirits. Young people, watch it. Your light will become darkness. Whoa, wow. Wow. Young person, your company of darkness is going to kill you. Be careful. You're wondering why God is not getting through? Because you are rejecting the light. God never asked you whether you're coming to church this morning. The orgies of darkness. The drunkenness of darkness. Drunkenness is not just alcohol. We are drunk with the pleasures of this world. We are drunk with the entertainment of this world. We are drunk with the lies of this world. We're drunk with the trends and the fashions and the designs of this world. We're, we're drunk with it. We're drunk with it. We're not able to work on it. We're not able to go forward. We're stuck. He says, the night is far gone. Come out of it. Sexual immorality, immorality sensuality. 
quarreling, jealousy. He says, if you have put on Christ, make no place for the flesh to gratify its, dese- its desires. Again in Ephesians 5, 6-9, to he says, let no one deceive you with empty words. The wrath of God is coming before you on these things. Do not believe the man that distorts the theology and says, once saved, you are always saved. And because you're speaking in tongues, you're going to go to heaven. That's a lie of the devil, no gift can save you. No gift can save you. No prophecy can save you. No blessing can save you. God said, I'll give you with a blessing. Go to Canaan. I'm not coming with you. I'll defeat your enemies. I'll give you the success you wanted. He said, let no one deceive you with main words. For the wrath of God comes on the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For at one time you were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. So sad. When the believer... Limits his Christian fellowship to a Sunday morning, 9.30 to 11.30 service. And we say hi to everybody and bye to everybody over a cup of tea. Some are too busy even for the cup of tea. And he says, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, you have fellowship. Let me open to you. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. He says the wrath of God is coming. If we claim to be in the light, he is in the light, and we walk in darkness, the truth is not in us. Paul says it's a lie. He says once you were in darkness, but now you are in the Lord. Walk in as children of light. People can go for their office, tours, picnics. It's a church camp. I got to go to office. Let's take it where the rubber meets the road. That's because that's where truth is. The truth is, the children come to school. But the truth is that the ones at their birthday party belong to the world. And you wonder in high school who taught them how to smoke cigarettes. The truth is, there's youth meeting at church, but you don't want to send your young person. And you wonder who taught them drugs and how he got friendly with that girl and how she got friendly with that boy. Oh, pastor, what are you saying? If your light is for two hours on a Sunday morning, you're walking in darkness. That's what I'm saying. And that's what I'm saying to myself. And that's what I'm saying. We, we can go six days a week to work. Sabbath. children can go on time. Sunday school, life group, by the way, life group leaders, we're meeting this Saturday, 10.30 in the morning, and those of you who would like to learn to teach and help out with life group, I'm looking for you to come in and, and look at what is our vision for life groups and decide if you want to take up that vision and be a blessing to the light in First AG Church. Let's, let's be honest. Do you like the light? No funda. Youth fellowship, no funda. 
we are with the people of darkness and our light has become darkness that we call what they do fun and call what young people do in the church boring. Are you catching what I'm saying? Light is becoming darkness. We can make 1,000 phone calls in the week. But you call one member from the church. One. Just tell him, I don't know. I was sitting before Jesus. And I was praying and he put your name. This is Christianity. Let's go with it. Or the darkness will become your light. And you can read news and entertainment on your mobile phone. And you'll say, I don't have time to read the Bible. And you know it's a lie. But the light inside you has become darkness. Let's go to the Word of God. Let's go. Let's just go into this Word this morning. Let's just receive from this Word this morning. He is looking at it and saying, Hey, I want you to understand God is the light and the light is overcoming the darkness. What, be honest, what is overcoming what in my life today? I can preach the message. But what is overcoming what in my life today? Is the good overcoming the bad? Is the right and the correct overcoming the wrong and the erroneous? Sometimes we know it's wrong, but we still do it. Is the truth overcoming the lies this morning? The devil is a liar. The devil is an accuser. What's the truth of church membership? What's the truth? What's good about church membership? Take a moment, think. God is going to bring revival into our midst. But the revival cannot come if each of us are content with the shadows. Be careful, you can be in the shadows for some time, but the shadows will become the darkness. Because the shadow comes from something that is stopping the light. And we may not understand it just now. It's only a shadow just now. But whatever is stopping the light will bring the fullness of darkness into our lives. And we will not know how to go forward. God is light. The light is overcoming the darkness. Therefore, he says to you and me, put on the armor of light. Don't go with, let not people deceive you with empty words. Lift up your hand and your name is written. I don't know where that theology comes from. I don't know. I don't know. He's talking to you and to me. Apostle Paul is talking. He says, listen, the wrath of God comes on children of disobedience. Do not be partners with them. For at one time you were in the darkness, but now you are in the light. Walk as children of light. Put away your Bibles. Put away everything this morning. I've just gone through two points. I'll do the next three next week. 
But just close everything down and close your eyes. Just open your heart, open your mind. Let the Holy Spirit speak. I've talked so much. I want the Holy Spirit to speak to me. You heard so much. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. I'm okay. You're okay. We are all okay. Come out of the shadows. For the darkness is coming. Stand in the light where God is that light. Because God's light is turning the shadows away. And God's light is, is putting darkness into such a place that darkness is fleeing and darkness is dying. Darkness in our spirits. Darkness in our souls. Darkness in our words. Jokes of the dark side. Pleasures of the dark side. God wants to clean up His church today. God does not care. When you keep on playing in the darkness and the shadows, we will become like Samson. He did not know when the Spirit of God left him. When you play in the darkness, you'll become like Saul. One day the Holy Spirit moved. The next day you will be like Saul. And when you want to have some advice for your life, you will go to the witches in the taverns, hiding in the dark and playing with tarot cards and doing table wrapping and all that evil things that come there. And it's passed off as a game. Remember, the voice in the darkness is not God's. It will be something of an angel of light and his messengers of righteousness disguised. Beloved ones, this morning, as you're going home, the quest for intensity, it, authenticity, walk the talk. If we say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth.